but just you find out that uh, deeper because you want to you know uh, factor c of s okay okay positive phase and the positive phase uh, this is a negative phase remember this means uh, the phase is negative right so you add a positive phase then you're going to drag this plot you know counterclockwise. okay when you drag a counterclockwise the plot what happens to the alpha phase margin becomes larger right see from the Lyquist uh, plot it is straightforward to see that uh, if you add a phase leader compensator it will help improve the phase margin you got my point okay you got my point right see this is a uh, can be can be read it can be read it you know right away okay now once you understand that then you're going to understand that uh when you apply the phase lag compensator because the you know, phase lag compensator the phase is going to be negative so if it is going to be the negative you will add it on top of this negative phase so you will drag you will make it you know the plot rotate clockwise okay you know if you move the plot clockwise yeah that's just like you are squeezing the phase margin you see you make the alpha smaller and smaller okay and if you have you can see that if you have a too much negative phase then you're gonna rotate this plot you know uh, go this way you see if you move it too much rotate it, you know uh, the plot uh, clockwise you know too much then the phase margin one will become negative so the system will become unstable so now you can see that uh, potentially the phase lag compensator actually is harmful for the for the stability margin okay the phase lead compensator is gonna be helpful for the stability margin okay so i think that is very important for you to realize the the difference of the the uh, the, the the roles of the phase leader compensator and the phase lag compensator okay okay the roles are different and one is helpful for the stability margin phase margin the other one is uh, harmful for the stability margin and if you if you have too much lag phase and you can even make the system closer system unstable okay okay so now um once you we understand that then we're gonna uh the uh, this is nice just okay now we need to uh, parameterize the gfs okay we can we can leave the controller cfs uh, open completely open <laughs> then you're gonna have a uh, numerous parameter to design okay and then then you then eventually you're gonna stop it you cannot do anything so we need to parameterize you know the controller cfs in other words we we need to specify a controller to be compensated to be used okay so in this uh, classical control case we're going to focus on the design a com compensator the controller in terms of this kind of format you see this uh, controller is is going to be characterized by three parameters k which is the control again and the t1 and t2 two time constant okay this is the first order and this is the two time constant numerator denominator okay okay and you know once you understand okay i can you know uh let you tell you right now is here once you understand uh, how you can design a uh, first order you know controller compensator you will know how to design the second one, okay? You can keep adding this uh, controllers like this, okay? Parameter like this, okay? We'll talk about that, okay? Okay, so, yeah, since we parameterize the controller, okay, now we're gonna, we all agree that we're gonna work on this, uh, you know, kind of a controller specifically. We're not gonna keep the controller open, okay? If you keep the controller open, you, you, you're gonna stuck, you don't have nowhere to go, okay? Okay, so if this controller is parameterized, you know, uh, by this uh, three parameters, then we 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 need to we we can do something. We can proceed. For example, 
we're going to find out that it's a frequency response, which is very important for us, right? The frequency response is going to have this kind of format, and uh, specifically, it, it will carry a magnitude that you know uh, that is uh, calculated by this uh, you know uh, uh, expression, and also I can figure out it's a phase, and this phase it's a phase what it's simply equal to the ten arctangent omega t one, which is the phase of the numerator, and minus the phase of the denominator, arctangent omega t2, right? See, I can express the magnitude and the phase out in terms of what? Three parameters. In terms of, actually, you know, the phase is only affected by the t1 and t2. We said many, many times, the gain k does not affect the phase, right? The gain k does not affect the phase. It will only affect the magnitude, but it will not affect the phase. So this is the case, right? So, so now you can see that from for this specific controller, then what is the phase lead? Yeah, as long as T1 is larger than T2, it is it will be phase lead. Why? Because if, if T1 is larger than T2, then this difference of, uh, is a positive. That that's very easy to figure out, right? That's very easy to figure out. And apparently, if T1 is less than T2, then this phase is negative. So, so you can see, we can very easily characterize the phase leader compensator and the phase lag compensator. So next, uh, we're going to see the example that uh, how we can design a phase lag and how we can design a phase lead, OK, out to, to achieve the desired performance, OK? OK, now. We need to do some calculation, okay? Do some count for the for this compensator. This compensator, yeah, you can try, you know, uh, to draw is a body plot, which is very easy to draw, right? You see, uh, let's uh, do a quick approximation analysis, okay? Let's say uh, for the for the first case, see, see, basically you have uh, you have three factors, right? You have three factors, is 20 log k plus 20 log uh, double bar j omega t1 plus 1 and plus 20 log, uh, uh, actually is minus 20 log uh, j omega t2 plus 1, right? See, this is the magnitude plot. And uh, for this one, well, we, we're going to just leave this one aside for a while. And then look at this one. Oh, you know what? This is a standard numerator first order case. We already know how to draw it. OK, so we identify the T1 over T1 here, which is the separation, the crossover, you know, the corner frequency, right? So because this is a numerator, we know that the plot is going to go from the, this is the 0 dB, OK? 0 dB. The plot is going to go up to the 1 over T1, the corner frequency, and then what? Then go up. And here is the 20 dB per decade, right? This is what we learned from the body plot, OK? Very easy. The approximation can be done, OK? Same thing for the uh, 20 log J omega T2 plus 1, OK? But this time, this is the negative. This is in the denominator, OK, first order, OK? OK, but uh, when you do the approximation, then there's a good question, OK? Is uh, if it is a T1 larger than T2 or T1 less than T2? You know why? Because uh, the two different situation, the corner frequencies order is
E2, this magnitude change is positive. It's a roll up. Great stuff, right? It's a positive. Okay, so if you can, you can, you know, uh, read the example for, oh, you know what, this is a standard numerator first order case. We already know how to draw it. Okay, so we identify the T1 over T1 here, which is the separation, the crossover, you know, the corner frequency, right? So because this is a numerator, we know that the plot is going to go from the, this is the zero dB, okay? zero db the plot is going to go up to the one over t1 the corner frequency and then what then go up and here is the 20 db per decade right this is what we learned from the body plot okay very easy the approximation can be done okay same thing for the uh 20 log j omega t2 plus one okay but this time this is the negative this is in the denominator okay first order okay okay but uh, when you do the approximation then there's a good question okay is uh, if it is a t1 larger than t2 or t1 less than t2 you know why because uh, the two different situation the corner frequencies order is different that make a difference that make a big difference right so if we look at the first case if t1 is larger than t2 which is the phase leader compensator case then what then you're gonna have a one over T1 is gonna be less than one over T2. Okay, so now you know that uh, the second corner frequency is gonna be here because it's larger than one over T1, right? Okay, so you can quickly draw the uh, approximation for the denominator first order is gonna go like this, right? You see, downward minus 20 dB per decade. Okay, okay. So now, then what? Then you need to add them together. Okay, okay. So that is that is very easy to be done. Okay, you you already practiced that in a lot of uh, assignments, right? So you're gonna see. Okay, now starting uh, in this range, both of them exhibit a zero dB. So you still have a zero dB. In this range, between the first and the second corner frequency, this this the denominator still show a zero dB. But the numerator already show a uh, upward, you know, magnitude. So it will stay with this one. Okay. It will stay with this one. Okay. After the second corner frequency, yeah, you're going to see both upward and downward. So the offset become flat. Down. This is going to be a phase lead compensator's uh, magnitude, you know, shape. Okay. Then. Don't forget a 20 log k. Yeah, okay. You know, that's just offset. It could either upward or downward depends on k is large than one or k is less than one, right? So it is easy to figure out uh, a phase lead compensator shape is here. Okay. Then I don't need to explain for the phase lag compensator, right? Because in this case, uh, your second corner frequency is here. Okay. It's less than the first uh, corner frequency right okay so your shape is gonna go uh, this way okay your shape is gonna go this way okay now the question the the uh for both uh, shape okay you know what uh, i can conduct this kind of a calculation i can find out to the peak the peak phase peak phase here with the peak uh, frequency m this is the phi m this is the phi m this is the omega m okay and uh, yes two corner frequency are the inverse yes yes yeah the inverse yeah okay so yeah the calculation well this can be a uh, calculated from the very simple advanced calculus okay because you have the phase here you just need to take a d omega d phi omega d omega equal to zero take the derivative you see this is the very basic you know advanced calculus right so you you're going to be able to find out the omega m and the phi m to be equal to this okay 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 and uh, not only that you're gonna see the magnitude changes actually equal to this 20 log 
T1 over T2. You can, you can figure out uh, yourself to calculate this difference. Okay. See, to calculate this difference. You know what? The K doesn't matter here. It doesn't matter what kind of a K value is going to use because here, this is a, what we talk about is the difference between the, the uh, magnitude of raise up or rose that roll off, right? Okay. So the K in this uh, process is canceled. So it really doesn't matter regardless of the value of the K. Okay. So this is a difference, this is a difference. It's always equal to 20 log of T1 over T2. Okay, now here you can see that for the phase lag compensator case, which is this case, you have what? The magnitude is going down. So that is why you're going to have a negative you know, uh, <laughs> uh, magnitude change. Okay, negative magnitude change. Because the T1 is less than T2, this number is less than one number. So the log number is negative. So you're going to see the, uh, the magnitude is drop. Okay, that's a negative. Okay, negative magnitude change. Now, for the phase leader compensator, yeah, you know, T1 is larger than T2. So this uh, magnitude change is positive. It's a roll off, raised up, right? It's a positive. Okay, so it doesn't matter. You can always use this formula. Okay. It will automatically tell you what is going to be the situation, okay? On the other hand, you can see that if T1 is less than T2, then numerator here is what? It's negative number. So that is why you have a negative phase. And uh, when T1 is larger than T2, this number is going to be larger than 1. So that's why you have the, you know, the, the phase is going to be positive. Okay, right? Okay, so this is very simple to be figured out. Okay, but uh, I want to tell you is that uh, we need to recall, I've just said that the phase leader compensator actually is a help for, for the stability margin solely because what? Because it can provide a, a positive phase, right? And the, the phase lag compensator it's harmful for the stability margin because it provides a negative phase. So from this uh, two figures now, you know, you can figure out. If you want to use the phase leader compensator, you are actually increasingly in use, interested in using the information around the peak frequency, peak uh, you know, phase, right? Because you want to take the biggest advantage of the phase lead compensate because you need it's a positive phase apparently you want to use it's a positive phase you got to dig out to the potential as much as you can and that is exactly the peak phase uh, range so you can now you can actually pretty much sure that uh, you want to design a phase leader compensator the game is going to be played around this area we want to take the advantage of this uh, peak phase area, okay? You're going to see that later, okay? You're going to see that, I mean, when we present the example, okay? On the other hand, okay, for the phase lag, you know, uh, compensator, can you tell me, should I be interested in this range? Someone tell me? One, if you can answer it correctly, we're going to wrap up the class. If you don't answer, or answer it incorrectly, we're going to continue. Okay? Someone, please. You don't want to leave? Fine. Okay? Come on, someone, please. Zia, why it is not right? Why it is not right? You see, you see here, 
this is a peak phase. It's negative. You add this much of a negative phase to the system, how do you, you know, expect that the system's stability margin is going to be, right? This could be very, very harmful. Not only harmful, but you are hurt the system the big time, the biggest time, right? You see, you're using the, the maximum negative phase, okay, to the system. So you can imagine, definitely, if you want to use a phase lag compensator, this range is what is you trying to avoid, okay? You're trying to avoid, okay? Okay? And uh, I can tell you that uh, for phase lag compensator, uh, the interested frequency range is here, okay? It's actually it's a high frequency range, okay? Okay? You know, you know, because uh, in this range, you see the phase lag is impacted as well. It's re diminished, okay? The negative phase uh, provided by the you know compensator, it's almost diminished. Okay, so that's what I want. I want the harm, you know, it can be contained. Okay, as much as I can. So exactly, I'm interesting this area. Okay, why not the low frequency range? You're gonna say that in the low frequency area, the phase negative phase is also small. Why we don't want to touch this part? Because someone, you know, uh, well, this is might be, a, this is not that straightforward. Well, it's kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, tricky. Okay. So can someone give me a answer if you can? Well, this, uh, this is not a, a, a judgment. This is going to be the last question. Okay. It doesn't matter you answer the correct or not correct. I will let you go. Okay. But I want you to answer that. Why I don't want to, I'm not targeting on this area to do the, Control design. What will, if I touch this part, what will be changing? Can you have this kind of a sense? Someone? Last question. Okay. See, I don't want this range. I don't, I'm not going to play this range. Okay. I want, I'm going to play this range. I, I've already tell you the, the answer, right? So, but why I don't want to play this range, the low frequency range? Someone? Not really. You see, like what I said, you know, uh, actually the, you see in this part, uh, you can see the phase, le phase lag is also small. So if you play in this range, it will not harm the, you know, the stability, uh, 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 you know, at least uh, it should be the same, you know, uh, level as the high frequency range, right? So if I, I don't care about the you know, high frequency range, I should not care about the low frequency range. So this must be some other reasons, okay? This means that uh, it must be some other reasons. What is that reason? You know, you see, in the low frequency range, did you notice that uh, the magnitude of the phase lag, it's uh, what? It's come down, right? It comes down. So what does this mean is that the, the highest magnitude happens in the low frequency range. Okay, now what uh, what does that mean for the closure of the system in, uh, performance? You see, for the tracking. I don't want to touch this part, is that uh, I want the low frequency range, the magnitude stay high, okay? Because if I play in this range, there is a good chance for me to drag this magnitude down. If I drag that magnitude down, then I'm gonna, you know, affect my tracking performance. You see what I mean? So that is why we would rather to stay, to leave the low frequency range as much as it can be, okay? As much as it can be, okay? And do not, uh, we do not want to touch it. Okay, because it's already high, let it go. Okay, let it leave it high because it will help the tracking. So we do not play in the low frequency range. If we play, we, we, we're going to have a good chance to drag this magnitude down. Okay, if we drag this magnitude down, it will hurt my tracking performance. So this range I want to avoid, this range I want to avoid, all the games is, can be played only in this high frequency range. 
we're going to see that in the next class in the examples okay so if, if you can you can you know uh read the example first so next uh, on wednesday when i come back to talk about it it will be easier okay any questions and now the classes will start
Okay. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So remember, we are we are here. Okay. Uh, uh, in the last class, and uh, we said that uh, uh, we're going to restrict uh, our uh, the the controller. Let's see. This is the controller, right? So we're going to restrict this one to be uh, parameterized by a first order, you know, compensator, and depends on the uh, the T one T two value. And uh, we're gonna, you know, uh, have a face lead compensator or face lag compensator, right? Okay. So, and also I mentioned that uh, the <clears throat> for the face lead and the face lag compensator, they have different kind of feature. Okay. Specifically, uh, you, if you look at this, that uh, you're gonna see the the main feature is this: is that first, uh, uh, both uh, compensator exhibit a, a, a peak frequency and a peak phase. It's just one is the negative peak, and the uh, uh, phase lead is the positive phase. Okay, and the both uh, magnitude of the compensators uh, will show uh, either a magnitude, uh, you know, uh, raise up. You see, this is raised up, or the magnitude, uh, you know, uh, uh, roll off. Right? Okay, and how much the magnitude is gonna be changed, and uh, between two corner frequency, this can be calculated the formula is here right okay and also i mentioned that uh, because uh, <clears throat> from this uh, figure and we know it's clearly that uh, if you apply a face lead compensator here and it is going to rotate on the likewise plot uh, to counterclockwise uh, so it potentially is going to it's going to it's going to uh, improve the uh, stability margin right so so the phase lead actually is good for the you know the uh, stability okay and but on the other hand if you use a phase lag phase lag compensator then uh, you're gonna uh, rotate the Likert's plot clockwisely so basically this one is gonna be uh, uh, it's gonna hurt the stability right because it's to squeeze out squeeze off the you know the stability margin from this likewise plot this is very clear so so uh, if you uh, think about this effect then you're gonna understand oh when we uh, apply a phase lead we are actually interested in the peak phase because we want to get the biggest pot potential from the compensator right okay so we are uh, in other words, when you use the uh, phase leader, you are trying to take the advantage of its a positive phase, okay? Of its a positive phase, right? Okay, that makes sense, right? And uh, when you try to use a phase lag compensator, apparently the peak phase is a, is a very negative, okay? This is something that we should you know, avoid, right? Okay, otherwise uh, you all of a sudden, you add a, a a a this much negative phase, uh, you know, when you uh, when you uh, implement a, a phase lag compensator here, you if you design the uh, uh, CS and uh, uh, and uh, and the, your plant to reduce the stability margin, and then you got a big trouble. Okay, you got a big trouble. So exactly, we should avoid this area. Okay. Now, um, I also mentioned that uh, for the phase lag compensator, actually the real interest area is in the high frequency area. Okay, because in this area, the uh, the compensator itself provides a very small uh, negative phase, which is tolerable. Okay, but in the low frequency range, it the, the compensator also provides a very small negative phase. Why we don't use this part? Because you see, you know what? Uh, we can't touch the gain part. Why? Because we want to leave the gain in the low frequency as high as possible. Remember, when we talk about the tracking performance, we already find out that it would be better to keep the low frequency gain magnitude as high as possible to improve the, to get a better, you know, tracking performance, right? So that's pretty much the fact. Okay, now uh, a good question here, we're gonna continue is, uh, is here. They say, what do you mean by uh, you are trying to use this uh, peak phase, and what do you mean by you're trying to avoid this uh, negative peak phase? 
for the face like compensator. Okay, that's a good question. I mean, you can't just tell me that, oh, I want to use this area. How? The question is how, right? You see, the point is this, is that, uh, you know, remember, we are trying to target is that, that we're in trying to improve the stability margin. So, which means that if I apply, apply a positive phase, I want to make sure that the positive phase is going to be added to the uh, stability margin, right? To improve the stability margin, okay? And uh, when we add a lag, lag phase, uh, lag compensator here, and we're trying to avoid the, you know, the phase is going to affect this uh, uh, phase margin, right? Okay, this is what we uh, uh, can see from the Lyquis plot. Then, good question here is that uh, how you can execute what do you want? The, the words that I've just said, okay? Yeah, the point is what is the crossover, crossover frequency, right? You see, remember the phase margin, the phase margin only happens at the crossover frequency, okay? Measured at the crossover frequency, okay? The phase margin is only measured at the crossover, zero dB crossover frequency, okay? So, okay, once you identify that, then it's very easy for you to realize that, oh, you know what, uh, if you want to use a phase lead, you better design the omega m, the peak frequency, to be the target to the crossover, zero dB crossover frequency. This way, you're gonna take the 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 advantages of the phase lead compensator the greatest, right? Because you 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 are try trying to design the peak phase right at the crossover frequency. That that would be wonderful. Okay, that would be wonderful, right? Okay, so that way you will enjoy the biggest benefit from the phase lead compensator. Now, um, on the other hand, when we say that. Uh, we are trying to avoid uh, uh, the negative peak phase uh, for a, a phase lag compensator. Ah, this is a well. This is very easy. We just need to what? We just need to avoid the, the zero dB crossover frequency to be right at this omega m. You see, it the purpose. You know, the way to use the phase lag and the phase lead compensator they are different. Okay. One is that you're trying to make the, the peak frequency to be around the, the crossover frequency, the zero dB frequency, okay? Better you make it right happens at the crossover. This way, you're gonna have the biggest benefit. But for the phase lag, you, you need to try to avoid the, the crossover frequency to be at the omega m, right? Okay, you see? Otherwise, if you design the zero dB crossover frequency at the omega m for phase lag compensator, you'll get this much you know negative phase right added you know uh, on top of your phase margin. <laughs> so your phase margin will be you know uh, diminished immediately, right? So that is the point uh, uh, that we we can consider, okay, when we use this uh, compensator. On the other hand. We, we cannot ignore the change of the magnitude, okay? Because you see, well, remember, when you have a, a magnitude of ro uh, raise up, you are actually trying to push the, always push the crossover frequency to the right, right? To increase the crossover frequency. Because you see, you raise the plot. So when you raise the plot of the G of S of the, the plant, you are basically trying to push the crossover frequency to the right, okay? And for the phase lag, yeah, you see, you have the uh, the magnitude is go downward. So this way, you're gonna push, you know, the crossover frequency to the to the left. Yeah, you might argue, you see, uh, may not be too much because the A could be made, uh, you know, uh, not big. But still, the impact cannot be ignored, completely ignored. Yes, the impact uh, it is not a, a very big factor okay but since you do have the the magnitude you know uh, change you know effect so uh the impact actually uh even if it is not big it still need to be considered or in the design okay in other words uh this uh, magnitude change 
in the face lead case will be will add some face margin okay because you push the uh no you re will reduce the face margin right because you push the crossover to the right you know so your the face plot normally goes this way if you if your crossover frequency goes to the right you're gonna see the 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 face margin here is gonna be could be decreased so we need to consider that uh, decreasing that is caused by the magnitude raise up in into the picture and for the face lag the impact is a little bit you know uh, better okay because you're trying to push it across over to the left so actually you are increasing you know the the frequency uh, the the face margin okay so this is something that we need to consider okay uh, now another issue that uh, we uh, uh, we need to uh, consider is that uh, okay exactly uh, how much you know uh, the well uh, actually there is a limit for the t1 and the t2 okay which will limit to the how much face leader you can get but we'll we'll talk talk about that when we talk about the the face leader design okay so yeah next uh, i'm going to present the example and this example is about uh, the design of the uh the face lag compensator okay okay let's look at the problem here okay see the problem is the example one okay see i have a plant here and the plant model is uh it's uh given here okay it's uh actually it's a motors model okay it's a motors model okay it, this motors model and uh, it will uh uh so it is uh you know you, you can see that the motor has an integrator right has an integrator okay and then um uh, with the KM and the TM's value as given here. So eventually uh, you got a model like, uh, you got a model like uh, uh, one over S and the 0 0.5, 0 0.5 S plus one. That is the model here, okay? Now we're trying to design a face lag compensator here. And, but we need to set up a goal. So what exactly, you know, when you add a control, so what exactly you want to achieve, right? So that's what, I'm, what I mean here, the desired performance. So what is the desired performance? The first performance that we want is that, uh, okay, when the input here, reference input here, it's a ramp signal, and I want the steady state error is going to be less than or equal, no more than 0.1, okay? Okay, so now you can see that, uh, because uh, the plant uh, in, has one integrator, so the plant eventually, uh, essentially, it's a type one system. Okay, so the for the type one system, it does make sense for us to talk about the tracking performance with respect to a ramp signal, right? So according to that chart, if you recall that, yeah, that is the case, right? So if we don't need to talk about the unit step. If you the reference signal is a unit step, why? Because this is a, <laughs> no. Uh, the plant itself is going to achieve uh, uh, good enough to achieve a uh, perfect tracking because it's because of the existence of the integrator. Okay, so the type one system can uh, track a unit step signal perfectly, no problem. You don't even don't need to consider, you know, uh, to do something in the controller. Okay, so you can do that, right? So the the tracking for unit step, no need to mention that. Tracking for unit acceleration signals, no need to mention too. Why? Right? Because uh, no need to mention you know, either, right? Because uh, <laughs> because we know that uh, in that case, uh, you know what, uh, um, the plant itself is will not be able to track that unit acceleration signal. But then you might argue, say, hey, I add a controller, then why not? I cannot improve that. Don't forget it. You see, we are restricting restricting our compensator to be in this kind of format, right? Okay, you see, this uh, uh, compensator actually does not, uh, you know, uh, give you an in integrator, okay? So you can see uh, for a type one plant, for a type one plant, if you do not add an integrator in the controller, there is no way for you to track a unit acceleration signal, right? The only way 
you need you can you know achieve uh track a uh, uh uni acceleration signal the par parabolic signal the uh, one half of uh t square okay the this uh parabolic signal is to add uh, one more integrator in the at least one more okay at least one more integrator in the CFS okay otherwise there is no way to for you to uh to track that uh, this is signal okay the tracking error is always blow up okay so but uh, you know what if you add an integrator into this controller then the controller will have a different kind of format it's not going to be in this uh, fa uh the uh, lead lag hamasator case okay so which means that uh, that kind of a controller design is different story we have to develop a you know a method for that for example if you want to design a PID, right? The PID includes one integrator. So in that case, a PID might be better, okay? But uh, since we restrict on the, you know, uh, uh, this kind of format to design the controller, so uh, for the performance uh, uh, consideration, we will not consider the uh, unit acceleration and also the unit uh, rep, uh, unit step, okay? So the reasons are on opposite you know direction okay one is that you have the perfect tracking and the other one is that uh, you cannot track it at all okay so it but it does make sense to see if we can you know uh uh track uh, a uh, ramp signal in at what uh, expense okay the tracking error how big the tracking error is going to be okay so apparently here we we want the error to be no more than 0.1 that's the first performance uh, you know requirement second one you can see that okay i'm gonna straight forward to propose that uh, i want uh, the phase margin to be what well, 55 degree well you know that uh, i i kept saying that uh, you know this basically means that uh, you are actually pose a requirement uh, for the closed loop systems damping right okay because uh, you we all agree that uh, from now on we're gonna you know uh use the open up systems uh the open up systems uh, you know face margin read reading to indicate the close of systems damping right okay so that's what we uh have already uh talk about it discussed it before right okay so yeah so this is going to be two uh performance uh, design performance and uh, did you notice that uh, i don't have the requirement on the bandwidth so if we do not have the performance requirement on the for on the bandwidth uh, then we just say okay any band and any bandwidth is fine okay any bandwidth is fine okay so if you normally if you do not have the bandwidth uh, re requirement uh, in the performance expectation then a face lag compensator it's a good choice okay a face lag compensator is a good choice okay so you will see that okay okay so now you see what is going to be the design procedure okay yeah i listed it here the first procedure is that you need to evaluate uh, the gfs the plant itself okay just uh, uh treated it like uh, you have not designed any control so this is cfs is going to be the one okay no control action is going to be added so you only evaluate uh, the plant itself well practically definitely this can be done right let's say if you have a motor you can evaluate it if you have a you know a machine uh, you can evaluate it right okay so you evaluate the uh the plant itself to see how it goes okay so yeah this is the evaluation in the body plot okay this is the g of s is a body plot okay see i we find out that it's type one and uh yeah and so we, for type one system, then we know that the KV is going to be equal to the KM equal to one. This is a very easy to, to get it, right? Okay. The error, velocity error constant is going to be equal to one. So right away, you find out that uh, the if you do not do anything for the controller, just uh, treat it as one, then the tracking error is what? It's going to be equal to one. Okay. The tracking error here is going to be equal to one over KV, right? according to that chart so that's going to be equal to one uh, that is way larger than the point one not acceptable okay so now you can see that it, it, the plan itself does not satisfy the performance expectation one okay okay we need to do something right okay and uh, uh from body plot 
it can be also can be also found that uh, the face margin of the plant itself is actually 65.5 degree which is already larger than 55 degree okay so in terms of the face margin it is okay okay does not satisfy the tracking okay requirement but it does provide enough face margin okay so now let's see how we can play that well don't forget that i mentioned that uh, we don't have the requirement for the uh, bandwidth closed loop systems bandwidth so this means that uh, we do not uh, have any requirement on the the phase margin crossover frequency right you see remember the closed loop system bandwidth is uh, is related to the phase margin crossover frequency right so this means that uh, we don't care about uh, where the crossover is going to be okay anywhere is fine if it is not in my performance expectation okay so now then uh the first step okay for the design is that uh, okay um apparently i need to because i'm using this uh i'm using this uh face lag compensator so the uh, the parameter i can use is a three three parameters is a k t1 t2 okay so now you know what uh, the k can only be used to uh to improve the tracking we already know that right you see because uh plant itself uh, is uh, kv equal to one okay so what you can do is that uh, you need a bigger you know uh uh velocity error constant and it can only come from the con controller from the compensator right from the k right extra k okay so okay so we we can do a calculation you see we set uh, you know uh uh k and the km is going to be equal to the one over point one well don't remember the point one is the requirement for the error but the error is going to be equal to the inverse of the velocity error constant so very naturally you're going to set up this uh, k km is going to be equal to one over point one which is equal to 10. okay you need a 10. in other words you need a velo uh, velocity error constant to be 10 to achieve a tracking error to be equal to 0.1. Okay, but uh, uh, the plant itself contribute a one. So what you need from K? Yeah, apparently K needs to be 10, to be designed at 10 or higher. If you want a tracking error to be smaller, then you need to design the K equal to more than 10, right? But here we're taking the 0.1 as the example, and then we're gonna set the, the uh, controllers again to be equal to 10. Okay, very easy. The value of the K is determined. Okay, it's determined. And this is based on the tracking error. Okay. Okay. But, uh, well, don't, don't be happy. Okay, don't be happy. You know what? Uh, you just look at this. So now you are, uh, you said, okay, you know what? Uh, now I know what I need to do with this uh, controller. You see, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to implement uh, a 10 here. Okay, right? If you implement a 10 here, then your tracking problem is solved. Okay, you see, this guy, the new openable transfer function will give you an error velocity uh, constant uh, 10 so that your tracking error with, with respect to a uni ramp signal is going to be equal to 0.1 perfect well then just be, well, before you can be happy then you have to check the other performance requirement you have to check uh, under this uh, 10 what is exactly the face margin of this uh, new open loop system right I remember I have not kicked in this part in yet. I've only tested the K equal to 10. Okay. Okay. So if you do this evaluation, then for the, you know, you see, then you need to evaluate the body plot of a K multiplied G of S, which is going to be equal to the 10 over S 0.5 S plus one, right? Very natural, very, you know, uh, uh, intuitive, right? Okay. But then you look at this uh, plot, this is a 10G, okay? This is a 10G. Then you, you can see what happens is what? 
because uh, you raise the magnitude uh, by 20 log 10, which is 20 dB, okay? You are raising this uh, magnitude by 20 dB, okay? But the K will not affect the phase plot, right? K does not affect the phase plot. So that will result in what? Your phase margin is going to be decreased because uh, you, if you raise the magnitude, you know, we've already uh, talked about it, right? You are basically pushing this crossover frequency to the right. So your phase plot does not change. Yeah, of course. Then your, you know, uh, uh, phase margin is going to be decreased here. You see, it's going to be decreased here. And actually, if you apply a K equal to 10 to the G, then your phase margin is going to be decreased to the 25.2 degree. Yeah, you see, this is way less than the expectation 55 degree. Way less than the 55 degree. Okay, not acceptable. Oh, so now you can see that, okay, you know, uh, your job is what, but you cannot change K anymore. You can say, oh no, I'm gonna decrease it, you know, to push the crossover frequency back. So my phase margin will be increased again, right? No, you can't do that. Because if you do that, your tracking performance will be violated, right? Remember the 10, I've just said that the 10 is the minimum to go for the K, right? It's the minimum to go, right? It can only go higher, you cannot go lower. If you go lower, the tracking performance will be viola violated. But you can see, well, you see, if you go higher to achieve better, you know, smaller tracking error, then your phase margin will continue to decrease, okay? It will continue to decrease, right? So you see, so yeah, here I just want to say that if you can do uh, the design for the K equal to 10, and then you will be able to do it for K larger, okay? The procedure is going to be the same, right? So it doesn't matter. So that's why I can take K equal to 10 as an example to show this design procedure, right? Okay, so now, it is clear now that, uh, okay, uh, because uh, we can't touch the K anymore. And, uh, but we still have the tool is what? Is, uh, is, uh, is this guy. You see, it's this part. The T1S plus one over the T2. We still have uh, the T1 and the T2 to play with, okay? We still have the T1 and the T2 to play with. So the purpose here, it is very clear. It's just, uh, I want to find appropriate value of T1, T2, such that uh, the uh, phase margin is going to be bring back to the 55 degree. Okay? Well, don't forget it. I don't have the omega PM, the crossover frequency requirement. So I really don't care about where the crossover is going to be. I just need my margin back. Okay? Well, the same time, I don't want to uh, decrease the K. So we're going to just leave the K with the, with the G. Okay. So when we design the T1S plus one over the T2S plus one, we are actually, it's going to uh, have a new plan model. And this new plan model is what? It's a 10G. Okay. It's a 10G. Okay. So we move to the step four. Okay. Step four. So now, from now on, we'll, we'll, our plant is not a G only. It instead is going to be the 10 G. And then I'm going to design the T1 S plus 1 and the T2 S plus 1, right? Okay, yeah, you see? Once I, come, when I find the value of a T1, T2, my job is done because I, I just simply move this 10 to the compensator, then my Compensator, my controller can be implemented, right? So this is the idea. So let's see how we're gonna design this. Remember, yeah, this is the time to you for you to see this picture, right? See, we need to avoid this, okay? But we need to use take the advantage of this area, right? Okay. So now you can see how am I gonna take the advantage? First, you need to identify the the target to the crossover frequency based on the phase margin requirement, okay? Based on the phase margin requirement, right? Okay, so well, because you don't have the, we did not ask 
post the requirement on the face margin uh, on the face margin crossover frequency. So essentially in this case, in this case, okay, only in this case, you can design the omega PM anywhere you want, as long as you can bring the face margin back. Okay, then let's just look at it, you know. Uh, um, so I need a 55 degree, okay? And uh, yeah, you might wanna say, then I just need to go back to this plot to identify where the 55 is gonna be, right? Okay, see, let's say you can identify a frequency here and with the 55 degree face margin, then you're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna target this frequency as my crossover frequency and then design the T1, T2, okay? Yeah, your idea is correct, but you should, like what I said, you should consider the other factor in is this, right? Don't forget it, because the phase like the T1S plus one over the T2S plus one, if you kick this uh, uh, factor into here, the, this will give you a magnitude drop by this much, right? Right? Okay? By this much, right? Okay? So if you, uh, if you, you know, uh, have this kind of uh, magnitude drop, so what does that mean? That means that uh, you're gonna bring down, you're gonna bring down this magnitude a little bit by the A. Okay, you know what, uh, if you bring down, you're actually, you know, like what I said, you're actually uh, push the crossover frequency to the, to the, to the, to the, to the left. So if you target a 55 degree, okay, and let me uh, work on this. The 55 is here, right? Okay. And, uh, but if you do not consider this, uh, you know, magnitude drop, then after you design the T1, T2 and the implemented practically, then you're gonna find that your crossover frequency actually is, will not be here. Instead, it will be here. Apparently, right? Because you see, because the T1, T2, the T1, T2 factor will bring the magnitude down by the A, by this much. So it will push the crossover frequency to the left further so that uh, you're gonna have a larger face margin than what you want. Okay, well, it does not hurt the stability margin. Uh, does not hurt the stability, right? Because you increase the stability of uh, phase margin, right? So it does not hurt the stability. But uh, on the other hand, uh, think about this. Uh, because we have the phase margin is gonna be the indication of the closed loop damping. So this way, you're gonna see that uh, you are, you know, involuntarily, you know, increase the closed loop system damping. Right, okay. I don't need that much damping, but uh, your design gave me too conservative. In other words, too conservative. You give me bigger closer with system damping and that will hurt my transient, transient performance, right? So what we could do, even if uh, that requirement uh, on the closer with system damping is not in the picture, it's, uh, well, actually it is in the picture. I just need a 55 degree. That's already indicate how much closed loop damping is gonna be. If you give me higher damping than that, that's not what I want. And by the way, if you have a higher damping, we know that the impact on the transient performance is gonna be slow down the transient performance, right? So, so in this case, we're gonna think about it and say, wait a minute, you know what? Uh, that's not a bad use of the phase uh, lag, you know, compensator, okay? The better use is that uh, we just uh, try to keep the goal, the 55 degree to be right at it, it is, at what it is, okay? This way, we're gonna have a better closer with damping. We're gonna have a better closer with transient, okay? But, so what does this mean is that we have to, you know, uh, consider, you know, uh, how much is gonna be, uh, this uh, face margin is gonna be, okay? We have to consider this uh, magnitude, uh, you know, drop into account. Okay, we have to consider the into account. Okay, okay. So the phase two, uh, the step two is gonna be uh, like this. Okay. 
So yeah, uh, we're gonna see, uh, uh, we're gonna target a crossover frequency at which a bigger, you know, phase margin could be obtained, okay, first, okay? And, uh, uh, you know, uh, so, and for example, if you need a 55 degree, and you need to have an allowance that it's, uh, give it an allowance five to 10 degree, okay? Five to 10 degree is good enough, okay? To tolerate uh, this uh, magnitude drop uh, A, to tolerate uh, this magnitude drop A, okay? Five to 10 degree allowance, good enough, okay? So in other words, you want to, uh, 55 degree, let's say if we take the 10 degree, you know, allowance in, then we should target on the 65 degree, you know, face margin area, okay? Face margin area, okay? So the 50, 65, remember the original system, how much is the original system? 65.5. Oh, so now you can see the original system has a 65 degree, you know, face margin, right at the crossover frequency 0.91 okay so now you're gonna see okay you know what i'm gonna do is well i'm gonna target a 0.91 as my uh crossover frequency okay as my crossover frequency okay oh uh, face margin crossover frequency okay but in my mind i already know that i might not be able to achieve exactly the 0.91 crossover frequency because of that magnitude drop Okay, so I I have to play conservative. Okay, so I target a 65 degree right at the 0.91 omega uh, crossover frequency, and then uh, uh, that is because I take the allowance 10 degrees into account. So this way, when I figured out the the design of the lag factor. And after I implement it, I will find out that the crossover frequency will not be, uh, you know, uh, just like, uh, you know, uh, like that. You know, actually, it's uh, it will be something higher. Okay, why is higher? Because you see, because uh, you you have you target this area, this uh, frequency 0.91 to, to design 65 degree. Okay, so. You apply the phase lag. Don't forget it. The phase lag is gonna, you know, bring down the magnitude, right? So the crossover you intend to cross over to happens at here, but the real magnitude is gonna, you know, what? It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be lower, right? So your crossover actually is won't be here. Okay. So we have to, uh, but if you consider allowance, it will automatically accommodate for that. So that is the purpose for us to add an allowance. Okay, so now we're gonna see how we're gonna, uh, you know, uh, implement the uh, design, okay? So since we target the omega m is equal to 0 0.1, uh, uh, 0.91, right, right? So then we need to calculate at the 0.91, you see, at 0.91, how much the plant it's gonna be, it's the magnitude, right? Because you want to target that uh, frequency to be the crossover. So you need to know how much, how much it's gonna be the plant. Don't forget it. Right now your plant is 10G, okay? Your 10G now, in this example, right? In general, it's gonna be the KG, okay? So you calculate at this frequency, how much is the plant is, uh, magnitude okay and then you can calculate that uh, you know uh, uh, oh you find out that this is a 20 dB in this example okay so the plant the plant pro provides a 20 dB right at the 0.91 right per second uh, frequency okay okay apparently this is above 0 dB Okay, so you want uh, you want uh, the uh, crossover to be at the 0.91, right? And you also know the uh, phase leader compensator will bring down the magnitude by this a. Okay, so so 
you need to make sure this A is going to be equal to minus 20 dB. Does it make sense? You know, if you if this uh, uh, magnitude downward, you know, uh, uh, action is a minus 20 dB, and you add this factor into here, you see, into here, so minus 20 dB plus 20 dB, you got what? 0 dB. Cross always is going to happen, right? Okay? So, so that is exactly, you know, the, uh, the idea for the design. So you can say, oh, now I know that how much magnitude drop I needed, okay? In order to uh, compensate the 20 dB, I need uh, uh, a magnitude drop uh, minus 20 dB. Okay, so this will immediately give you the ratio of T1 over T2. You can calculate the T1 over T2. And this is going to be equal to 0.1. Okay, this is going to be equal to the 0.1, right? Okay, now you recall the picture here. Recall the picture here. So you see, let's see what I what we uh, already uh, uh, determined. We already find out uh, the T1, um, the T1 over T2 is gonna be 0.1, okay, 0.1, okay? And that's, uh, that represents a drop by this, the A, okay? And this is gonna be equal to 20 dB, right? Okay, and don't forget it, see, because you already allocated the gain K to the, you know, uh, to the plant, to the, to the plant G. So your uh, magnitude plot for the lag of factor part is going to go this way, you see. Starting from 0 dB and then drop it by A and then stay flat, right? Okay. Well, this is approximation. So you restrict the T1 over T2 equal to... 0.1, well, that just basically set the ratio of this two corner frequency. So the ratio of this two corner frequency is fixed, but not the value itself. So then we need to, well, remember we said that we're interested in this area. So we're interested in this area means that we intend to make the crossover frequency happens in this area, okay, in this area. But we know that uh, the crossover frequency we needed is, or target is uh, 0.91, right? Okay, so now you can see that, uh, you know what, uh, in order to make the uh, omega n 0.91 in this area, we better be careful to choose the second corner frequency, which is 1 over T1, okay? I mean, the... 1 over T1 definitely is less than the omega, should be less than the omega Pn, right? Okay, actually, you can see that the, the, the much, the lesser, the less, the more, the, the, the less uh, the uh, 1 over T1 uh, comparing with the omega M, the better performance you're going to have. Why? Because you see, this distance uh, will be uh, bigger. This distance bigger means that uh, the negative small phase is the negative phase provided by the factor will be smaller and that's what we want okay because you see this uh, negative phase will eat the allowance okay this negative phase remember it is not uh, uh, in my original uh, uh, picture when we consider the 55 degree you know uh, phase margin instead because I add allowance. Why should I add allowance? Because I want to, that allowance to be eat by this uh, small negative phase provided by the lag effect. Because this one, how much is this, uh, you know, uh, small negative phase? It is not in my calculation, you know, picture. I'm just roughly use allowance to accommodate that, right? Okay, so this is the point that uh, to add allowance here. So we're gonna say, oh, okay. Uh, but I know that if I make the distance between the one over T1 and the omega PM is larger, bigger, you know, 
the impact of the negative phase will be smaller because this phase is actually approaches to the zero degree, right? Okay, so if you keep this distance larger, then the impact is going to be smaller. Okay, but you know, roughly how big how big this distance should be? You know, roughly we have an idea. It's that uh, we need uh, this one is ten times less than omega pm at least ten times. Okay, less. Okay, ten times less. So that is the calculation here. That is the calculation here. You see, we want uh, we want uh, this uh, we want this uh, one over t one to be 10 times less than the omega m. You can take a 20, you can take a, you know, 100, you can test it, okay? If you take this uh, number higher, okay, then what? Then the, the margin allowance could be less, okay? Could be less. You can, you can imagine, because the, if this number is higher, the Cross the phase margin crossover frequency will be much higher than the one over T one, which means that uh, the lag factors uh, negative phase it will be smaller. Okay, so in this way, your allowance uh, will be will be less. Okay, the requirement of an allowance will be less, right? So so since I give it a ten degree allowance, and then you know a ten times uh, it's reasonable. Okay, ten times is reasonable. Okay. So if you set up this equation, then T1 can be obtained as the 11. And because T1 over T2 is restricted to be 0.1, and this has to be restricted, right? So the T2 can be calculated as uh, 110, of course. And once you find out the T1, T2, yeah, your lag, uh, phase lag compensator is gonna be equal to 10, Multiply 11s plus 1, 110 over the 110s plus 1, right? See, this factor is, uh, is uh, all parameters are figured out, right? Okay, now the last step is what? You have to validate, validate this design, right? You see, what we conducted the procedure here is allowance of 5 to 10 degree. These are all just a rough, rough estimation, right? Okay, it's an estimation, right? So we need to validate to see if it is true that uh, we conducted this procedure. It does give me what I want. Okay, so the validation uh, is here. Okay, so the validation actually is uh, in this figure. Okay, this uh, figure is a CS complete figure body plot of a CS uh, multiply G of S. Okay, this figure is a complete uh, uh, figure for the CS multiply GS. Okay, this one is I just want to show you clearly. And so I separate uh, each factor's uh, figures. Okay, separate each factor's figures. Okay, and uh, so this is the 10G, and then you add a, this is the controller, this is the compensator. Okay, this is the T1, T1S. Well, actually, um, So this is the uh, 11, this is the 11s plus 1 over 110s plus 1, okay? This is the magnitude, this is the phase, okay? You see, the neck big, the peak negative phase is here, okay? It's a <laughs> far away from the crossover, you see? You see, I don't, I, I it, because you see, if the crossover is much higher than the peak frequency, then what? Then you have a, the system, the 10G will have enough phase margin to phase uh, to be offset by the negative phase, right? You see, you need to see, if you apply the factor you know, to the 10G, you're gonna see the big drop of the phase here. But this big drop, because you have the high phase here, so this uh, negative phase will not be enough to drag the phase uh, touch, you know, uh, uh, the minus 180 degree line. It will stay above that. So it will give you the positive phase, right? 
uh, positive phase margin. So it will not hurt the stability. Okay, it will not hurt the stability. In the in this range, I don't care about the 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 negative phase drop. Okay, I only care about the the drop right at the crossover. Okay, you know here I have to be careful, right? So you can see after you apply this factor to 10G, then you have this uh, plot, body plot. Okay, so now let's target it. Well, this figure basically shows that uh, you have a 60 degree phase margin and uh, at right at the crossover frequency 0.914, okay? Okay, you know, see, you know, this is 60 degree uh, phase margin is more than, this is 60 degree is more than 55 needed. Yeah, you know what? You have space to improve. You have some margin to improve. How to improve that? This is what you can do. You can decrease the allowance. This is means that uh, you're giving too much allowance. Okay, the 10 degree is overdone. Okay, so you might try a seven degree allowance and then rerun this procedure again. Okay, rerun this procedure again. Okay, then you're gonna see the face margin eventually is gonna be drop from the 60 to close to be closer to the 55. Okay, so uh, seven degree could be could be the case. Okay, could be like uh uh. Uh, allowed okay now another uh, factor another number you can play is what remember this is 10 okay I said that uh, the 10 times okay so if you do not change your allowance still keep it at 10 degree then what then this means that uh, the 10 times is a strict number too strict you are designed the crossover frequency too far away from the one over T2, uh, T1, okay? So in this case, uh, you might decrease this times to make it, uh, you know, like a seven or 10 or eight, I don't know. I mean, you have to run the numerical design again, okay? To see what exactly the number is gonna be, right? So you can roughly decrease the 10, uh, the times from 10 to seven to eight, and then try again, okay? And then this might offset your uh, 10 degree you know, allowance, okay? So that your face margin will be uh, bring will be brought to be closer to the 55 degree. So these are the two numbers that you can play, okay? These are the two numbers that you can play, okay? Two numbers that you can play, okay? So you see what I mean, okay? The allowance uh, numbers and the times numbers, okay? So that's pretty much the complete uh, design procedure for the face lag compensator, okay? So if you follow this uh, uh, procedure, the, well, I think the most important, you have to understand what we're doing here, right? Why we give the allowance and why we target, the, you know, this uh, uh, frequency, okay? And because apparently, you know, uh, you, you choose the frequency based on the targeted face margin plus the allowance, okay? Then you then you choose a targeted frequency to design your face lag compensator, okay? And follow this procedure, and pretty much you, you know you're gonna get it in one shot, okay? You're gonna get it in one shot, okay? So that's the design of the face lag compensator, okay? So after we come back from the break week, we're gonna talk about how we can design a face lead compensator, which is in the in the next example, okay? And so, yeah, so yeah, see, actually I run a <clears throat> numerical, you know, uh, example here, you see, and say, if you do not choose the 0.91, you choose a one rest, you know, that's a little bit higher. Uh, well, <clears throat> higher crossover frequency means what? Means the smaller allowance that is used, right? Less than 10 degree, okay? You use 10 degree, and you actually targeted the face margin frequency, uh, crossover frequency at the 0.91. Now you choose a higher crossover frequency. Remember, when you push the crossover frequency higher, 
the phase margin is going to be decreased, right? So this means that uh, you are giving smaller allowance number, okay? Allowance. So if you choose that, then you can calculate the, 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 the magnitude of the 10G again. So in this case, uh, you're gonna find out that it's not 20 dB, it's actually, it's 19 dB. Okay, so then from this way, you're gonna be find out, uh, okay, the ratio of T1 over T2 is not 0.1, instead it is 0.11, okay? It could be go higher, okay? Could go higher, okay? Because you only need a minus 19 dB, the magnitude drop from the factor from the face lag compensator, right? Okay, you still use the same times, the 10 times. Then you're gonna find out uh, the omega T1 is still the 0.1, but uh, since you have the ratio is a 0.11, so now your T2 is not gonna be 110. Instead, it's gonna be the 91 roughly, okay? So your new compensator, when you give a smaller allowance, your new compensator is gonna be 10, multiply 10 S plus one over 91 plus one, S plus one, right? So this is your new compensator. Okay, now then we're gonna validate this new compensator again. Oh, now we find out that you see the face margin now it is a 58 instead of a 60, okay? At the crossover frequency, it's almost 10. It's almost one rest, right? 0.991, right? Okay, see, you see, if you decrease the allowance and uh, do not change the times, still use the 10 times, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna actually bring the face margin to be closer to your targeted face margin, okay? You can keep trying, you know, you can keep trying, okay? So this means that you can further decrease the allowance number, okay? See, uh, so this is the, complete the procedure for the face lag of compensator, okay? So I will stop the lecture here and uh, I will take some questions if you have, okay? Uh, yes, yeah, go ahead. Trying to uh, derive, oh, uh, by the way, before I let you go, okay, I'm gonna let you uh, tell you that. Uh, uh, I already talked to the GA, we're gonna schedule a, a session, uh, a time in the evening, okay? In the evening and uh, so that uh, he will give you a brief of the lab two, okay? Lab two procedure, okay? So I will post that uh, on the blackboard, the time. Probably it's gonna be the evening 7 p.m., okay? It's uh, the evening 7 p.m. You finish all the class, okay? Also finish your dinner. So you come to the virtual classroom and the GA will be there to talk about uh, the, just give you a brief idea for the lab two, okay? Okay, so we're gonna run that session, okay? Yeah, now, Andre, I'm answering your question. I tr was trying to derive the equation for T1 from the RPM equal to uh, this, and uh, from my calculation, it should be, what, you see, it, for this example, Andre, is, this is exactly what I'm saying. I don't need this uh, phase, uh, I don't need this uh, peak frequency, right? Okay, I don't need this, uh, peak frequency, right? Okay. You see what I mean? I think you made a mistake. Okay. I think you made a mistake. Okay. The cross, the, the peak frequency is, it's not gonna be possible equal to the one over, uh, one over T1, okay? Oh, um, the phase uh, crossover frequency, you see, uh, you see the formula you're using, this uh, square root of uh, T1, T2, remember, uh, it's here. Let's look at it. See, this is the peak frequency. This is this frequency. And as I said, because uh, when I'm talking about the phase lag design, I actually do not want uh, the the PM is gonna be at this frequency. So you cannot use this formula. You see what I mean? Okay. Right? You got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, that's not what we want. I mean, that we don't even uh, touch that, uh, you know, uh, that formula 
when we talk about the when we design a face lag compensator we're going to use that formula you're going to see that we're going to use that formula when we design a face leader compensator okay okay you know exactly like what i said for the face lag compensator i try to avoid that peak frequency okay but for the face lead i'm trying to take advantage of the peak frequency okay so that is the picture okay that is the picture you got my point right okay yeah uh yeah it, it it's gonna be the today uh 7 p.m or maybe tomorrow is better okay i'll give you more time okay to prepare okay so maybe uh, not everyone well, if i if we make it a 7 p.m tonight and uh and there is gonna be a rush for everybody okay so maybe thursday's uh, 7 p.m is that okay okay thursday's 7 p.m okay yeah yeah okay no problem thank you Ima. okay no problem abdallah okay so any other question about this uh face lag compensator design you know it's it will be a fun you know i would highly suggest you guys to play with the number of uh, that times 10 and the number of allowance to see how it goes to get some you know feeling right it will be really a fun to play with this number okay you can play that in the man lab right okay to change that number to see how the controller you know uh, uh it's gonna be uh changed and also how the performance is gonna be changed right okay you know so uh you can play with this number and uh, to have some fun okay and this is also help you better understand the design of a face lag compensator okay okay i would highly suggest that uh, you should uh, play with these numbers okay highly suggest that okay now any other question any other question <laughs> 